Welcome back to our studio, Tom Davis, together with Rick Dempsey and joined by Jason Hamill. You look like you're the shortest one out of the three of us here. <laughs> I resemble that <laughs> remark. <laughs> Jason, you made a comment last night uh, in the post game about that you felt like last year you began to become a pitcher. Explain a little bit what you mean. It was it was basically after a while you get your teeth knocked in for so long you got to make an adjustment. <laughs> so um, pretty much yeah, I just became a student of the game, uh, learned what worked for me, and uh, really tried to apply myself as a pitcher instead of just coming out and throwing. Well, Jason, you know, you talk about adjusting, and this is something that I watch because, you know, I caught guys for 27 years and 24 up here, and not often do you see a pitcher that's able to make adjustments in the middle of the game like you've done. Four good pitches, when one ain't working, you go to something else. Exactly. you got to be able to mix it up to big league hitters or they're going to they're gonna end up throwing some of the pitches out if you're not consistent with them, and then you get stuck. There was a key last night when uh, the situation with Brett Lorry wound up being safe at first on a tainted call by the umpire, mm -hmm. and then you went to went to work on uh, Colby Rasmus. Tell us exactly what transpired there. Well, what happened? Uh, are we going to see a clip of that? Or? Yeah. Okay, here, here we go. Okay. Uh, basically, I was just trying to get ahead. My two-seamer was moving a lot last night, um, trying to establish in. Uh, with, with Rasmus, his whole approach when we were in Toronto was go the other way, so I really wanted to keep him aware of being inside. Um, got ahead of him 1-2 and threw a back foot slider. He kind of spit on it. And then I went back to the two-seamer away and he fouled it off. And I think I had set him up pretty well to where he was keeping thinking that I was going to keep two-seaming two off the outside corner. And I went with a four-seam and uh, came back up and got up nice and high and got him to swing through it. Well, it looks like the two-seam has really become a favorite pitch of yours. Really, be Was there problems in Colorado getting that ball to move as much? I think, yeah, definitely there were. I was trying to manipulate it, just the, the thin air over there, um, me not trusting it at that point, and then uh, just, you know, I, like you said, just the thin air. It really wasn't moving as much as uh, it sure has here. With the curveball, too, is something that I really noticed, too, because there isn't too many people. that I, I caught Tippy Martinez. Of course, he was a left-hander, very tight, very quick, and a very big, you know, almost 12 to 6. Mm. Your curveball seemed to be getting better and better and better and tighter at the mm. same time. How does it feel? It's it's getting there. Um, I've been very reliant on the slider earlier this, earlier this part of the year, um, but the sl the curveball is something that I'm going to need to have to get ahead early uh, for just to, just to as a show me pitch. It's such a feel pitch that uh, I haven't quite gotten completely comfortable with it yet, but it, it's on its way. Jason, how about the consistency factor that over the first four starts here with the Orioles? It seems like you've been really in a good groove. You know, I'm just following the fingers that Weedy's putting down. <laughs> <laughs> he calls a great game. You'll I'm, learn not to trust that guy. <laughs> <all the time. laughs> I'm, uh, you know, he is outstanding. I'm very impressed with Matty. Um, but uh, like you said earlier, the, the two-seamers become a great weapon for me, if, even just getting in behind in counts. Last night, I, I didn't get ahead of hitters very well, um, but I was able to come back with a two-seamer, just throw it right down the middle and let them beat it into the ground. You know, I've noticed something about a couple of your games. Of course, the first game was a seven-inning no hitter. Mm -hmm. You were kind of in control the whole time. Time. Then two starts in a row where you struggled at the very beginning. You made adjustments, came out of it. Then the bullpen came in to help you. Mm -hmm. And then last night, again, it seemed like everything fell back in place. So we were talking about adjustments, and you mm -hmm. seem to be able to make them very quickly now. I, I think that just goes along with the maturation process of a big league pitcher. You know, after a while, you, you start learning things. You learn how to make adjustments that pertain to what you're doing wrong. And and uh, being able to make those adjustments on the fly is huge in, in being able to get deep into a ball game and learn how to win. Jason, the one thing uh, we've, we've heard that your wife's involved with an adoption agency and you wind up playing around with the kids, teaching them to play baseball. Tell how that all developed. Well, it, it's, it's fun. My wife is, uh, she's, she's wonderful, obviously, but uh, she's a people person and she always wanted to help out. Um, she uh, worked with an adoption, an adoption agency in uh, Providence, um, where we live, and uh, she doesn't do it now, obviously. She's got the, we've got our new one, so he's he's a handful. But uh, just going and, and hanging out with those kids, you know, let, watching them do what I was doing when I was at the same age, you know. And now I'm actually living the dream. You know, it's fun to watch how how I kind of acted, you know, when we were younger, just having fun and and teach some kids uh, how to have fun, you know. I also understand you want to be a graphic designer when your career is over with baseball. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was kind of uh, the plan if baseball didn't work. Um, I was I was going to try and I was always a good artist um, and I did things on the computer in school. But, you know, obviously baseball was my big dream. And, you know, I got lucky towards the end of my high school career, got seen by some scouts and things develop after that. But uh, I'll definitely fall back on that later in life. 
Well, we've enjoyed the conversation. We've enjoyed watching your pitch so far this season. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's been a lot of Keep fun. Keep it going. Keep it going. It's fun <laughs> to watch your pitch. It really is. Thank Jason you. Hamill has done a great job for the Orioles. His 1.73 ERA now ranks third in the American League in the early part of the season.